let's move into the, the place where we first met. Um, one of your agronomists, and one of the things I love about your company is the, the, the depth of um, agronomy that you have on your team. Um, and you've got a, a one really passionate agronomist um, who, who did some research online and, and was uh, doing a bunch of trials side by side, uh, Tommy, uh, with um, trying to figure out how to solve your umbrellas challenges. Go back, go back in time. Tell us about your umbrellas challenges. Tell us about how t what Tommy was looking at and how we kind of found Holganics and how you and I met. So we were one of the um, early adopters of umbrellas. We actually tested it through NC State University that early the fall before it was released. So John, we came just hit one second, Jonathan. I just want some people may not know what Imprellis is. Imprellis was a new herbicide by DuPont that was wonderful at killing uh, broadleaf weeds, you know, particularly good at clover and, and other hard to kill broadleaf weeds. It also happened to have a long term negative effect on conifers and, and other, and other uh, uh, trees. And so it became uh, banned. In the process, a lot of uh, early adopters had a, a lot of tree challenges and, and dead trees, frankly, to deal with. And so Jonathan was one of those. So I'm sorry, Jonathan, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted to make sure right. we take that for granted. And, and, uh, yeah, and I'm sorry, I, we take that for granted. Everybody knows what it is. We spent two years dealing with it. So, um, but when it, when Prolis came out, we tested it in the fall, had no problems. Test came out in the spring, sprayed the first half with it, started doing the second half. And we started seeing conifers curl up in around May. And at the time, you know, as, as we went through the process with DuPont, our customers, we were we weren't waiting on DuPont to come up with a solution. They really, you know, they kind of denied it in the beginning, and it was a slow evolving process to actually fix the plants that were out there. And so we started looking at things on our own, how we could grow them back out, how we could minimize the damage, looking at things that had worked in the past, using more carbon, using things that we knew that would help them and we tested a lot of products we started using just a basic humic acid product and then as we in our research we found him we found the organics and it had the, the, the what really kind of got us on organics to be honest with you was it's a clean product from a mixability solubility and staying in solution standpoint a lot of the products back then in the early days of the humic acids and the biological products they either wouldn't stay in suspension clog the nozzles or just weren't stable entities and Hoganics came out of the gate having all those in their corner which made it an easy choice and then as you'll see in some of the next pictures we were able to bring some trees back from the brink by doing drenches with it so these are these are conifers that were damaged by imprellis is that what we're looking at jonathan yes and so that you can see the side by side, um, obviously the ones that look kind of pale and, and look like they're really struggling in prelice damage. And then three soil drenches uh, over what period of time? Do you remember, Jonathan, that you did those three soil drenches? They were, they were done a month apart. Okay. And so soil ahead. drench, no, no foliar, just right around the root ball of the tree? Um, on these particular ones, we just did drenches. There are some that we've done foliar with, but I think as we went through the process, we found that the drench was really all we needed to do. And, and Jonathan, uh, are you able to see the pictures? I know your internet wasn't super stable. Yes. Okay, so how about this picture we're looking at right here? I mean, I, I see a stick on one side, and the other side I see a green conifer. Tell me, can, do you remember that? Um, this is one that, that Tommy dealt with, and I, you know, it's one of those, I think he thought, I'll just do it because I'm here. And we weren't really expecting to leaf it back out. Yeah. And and at the time, you know, the Imprellis, it just, it, it devastated these trees. And, and this one flushed back out fairly quickly. Yeah. And we, we were shocked. And and here's another another Imprellis recovery. And, and for those of you maybe who had some Imprellis damage and lived through it, I mean, it, it, it absolutely killed hundreds of, and thousands of trees um, the damage to DuPont was, I don't know the exact numbers, but it was in the hundreds of millions that they had to, rec that they had to, um, you know, pay out. And, uh, and there was, people were saying there was no hope for these imperial damaged trees and through, through the guys at Growing Green and, and, uh, Tommy, uh, one of uh, Jonathan's agronomists and Jonathan, you know, we saw this, this, this result and we, we went to DuPont and, and talked to their, uh, 
agronomists and tried to get them to, to see this as a solution, they were so buried in, in litigation that they just they couldn't even get their head up. And so it's a shame we couldn't have helped more people. We, we certainly did take that and, and, and help a dozen or so other uh, customers recover from Imprellis. But you guys were the ones that really helped us really see the, the before and after. And so, so really thank you for that. And it was a great way for us to get to meet each other. Um, and we do appreciate y'all. Y'all, and there's actually a video, a couple of videos on our YouTube channel at Growing Green that actually show the process and show us the before video of, of us actually applying the organics and then the after video when Tommy went back. And they're yeah. not of these, but there are some large cryptomerias that did really, really well. And and these were all trees that were slated for removal. Right. Right. They're still standing today. And and you know, the cost of of treating one of those trees with a Holganics product was just a couple of bucks, right? Yeah, I mean, like those trees that we would have probably charged them $150 for to drench those three trees. Right. And your cost was a real fraction of that, even. I mean, obviously, if labor yeah. was involved. Um, so uh, just, just really tremendous. Now, you've used it with your tree and shrub program ever since, right? With your maintenance? Um, yes. It's been a staple of our tree and shrub program ever since we, you know, we discovered obviously the the it helping the plant de stress and come back out of the damage can you help us understand what you know how many times a year you're using organics in your tree program and and some of the benefits you're seeing generally forget about Imprella, it's just a general maintenance program so what we do is um we do a we call a sprinch early in the spring generally february march of organics and also an insecticide to help with aphids beetles whatever other sucking insects are out there. And then as we start the foliar spray, we do mix it into the foliar, but that's kind of a, you know, the, the real the real assets, the sprinch up front, we're getting the most around the root system and that's where we want it. We also do a final drench in late fall, again, at a high rate to help it get through the winter stress. Right. That, what we've seen is healthier plants, um one one kind of um interesting note is we've seen less aphid populations breaking through past the insecticide in the yeah. past we would we would still have black crepe myrtles no matter what we put on them and now i haven't seen one in years on one of our properties that's that's a that's a great story and you know we see that correlation um <laughs> And I was talking to Jonathan about this uh, when we were talking a couple of days ago. But for those of you who are on the phone listening, the uh, the BRICS index is a measurement. It's a it's an indicator of how much sugar and acid the plants are able to produce. It's also a sign of of how how efficient the physiology of the plant is. And so a lot of uh, organic growers of of produce will actually measure BRICS on a on a monthly basis, and because they want to drive the BRICS up, because that means they're going to have better produce, better tasting produce, higher quality produce. But another reason to look at bricks is because it tells us how efficient the plant is at physiology and producing those sugars and acids. And as we get those sugars and acids higher, the aphids are repelled. They don't like to go um, on plants that have high bricks index. They like to go for the, the plants that are struggling a little bit more with a, with a lower bricks index. And so by improving bricks, we're going to improve the plant's natural defenses against aphids. Um, some other insects as well, um, but aphids are a big one. And so that's kind of some of the background behind why you're seeing those aphid populations go down without using a bunch of additional insecticides. And the Bio 800 product line, absolutely, every time we measure it, improves bricks by dramatic numbers. Uh, we're doing a lot in agriculture now, um, and that's one of the primary reasons they're using this is because we're getting a better tasting fruits and vegetables because of that bricks index. So just, just kind of a side note on that. Um, so, Jonathan, as you, you talk about uh, – that you don't get flare-ups. So we put that note in here on the sh on the slide. Can you tell us about what you're talking about there? Well, the, one of the one of the bad things about aphids is generally, you know, the way our program works, we're coming about every 30 days in the summertime, and we are really selling our program as a maintenance program. We're not trying to cure all the ills that are out there through the program. That we will address certain needs if necessary, but. And I'll take my own house as an example. Uh, we've been treating it for five years now. And every year I have three crepe 
hurdles that just would, no matter what would happen with the insecticide, we would start to see the black sooty mold show up in late July from where the aphids were starting to, to get active and secrete. And we would try, we've tried increasing the amount of insecticide to get a longer longevity out of it. But once we started using the organics, that kind of went away. We also saw a dramatic reduction in Japanese beetle activity. And, you know, we've been able to manage our insect levels fairly consistent on a lower scale than prior to using it, where we would have been using a lot more organophosphates, a lot more, you know, rescue products in the summertime. Now we're able to stay in more of a maintenance mode and a preventative mode. Yeah, that's really cool. And we talked about the bricks, and that's one of the reasons. The other, the other thing that we're seeing as a benefit is um, anytime you're using a systemic, something like an imidacloprid, a systemic insecticide, in, in conjunction with the Bio 800, because we're going to improve the physiology of that plant, because a lot of that biology is going to actually enter the plant, there are some, of the, some of the biology is endophyte, endophytes, so they go inside the plant. Some are ectophytes. They live around the outside of the plant. But the endophytes are going to help improve the, um, uh, the efficacy of the, uh, the um, imidacloprid-type insecticides. And so that's going to help give us additional uh, benefit as well. Um, so, so cool stuff, Jonathan. Thanks. So 